start. Okay, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the April 12, 2023 budget meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff of the liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Fea if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Fea, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good evening. Ms. Dominowski? Here. Mr. McMillian? <laughs> Ms. Hen? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aya. Um, Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Here. Oh, I think you're muted, uh, Chris. I can't hear. Mr. Hartwell? Here. Mr. Tentworth? Present. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Aya. Um, okay, Mr. Tatliff, Tatliff, Tentliff, please review that fiscal year 2023 budget appropriation transfer. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dominowski, and good evening, everyone. Uh, before I start, I just want to mention the bat itself that you had in board docs. Uh, none of the numbers will change, but we clarified uh, some of the descriptive wording uh, to be a little more concise on both uh, tabs. And uh, so I'll put it on my screen. And again, none of the numbers are changed. Just some of the words were uh, sentences were were just tweaked to cl for clarification. And the one I have is what will be in board docs for the vote and for the board uh, next week. So let me uh, pull it up uh, and it should be very similar to the one you have in board docs. Okay. Good evening. In front of you, you will find a budget appropriation transfer or BAT request. The BCPS budget consists of 13 separate appropriations by activities prescribed by the Maryland Department of Education or MSDE. <clears throat> Transfers of funds between activities requires approval from the Board of Ed and County Council. Based on close monitoring, monitoring of expenditures through the first three quarters of FY23, our current full year expense projections show an overall surplus, but with shortfalls in some activities and surpluses in others. Because BCPS carries no contingency budget, the only way to manage unanticipated expenses during the year is via amendments to the budget. We are projecting overall we'll finish the year approximately $35 million under budget. Each quarter, all budget line transfers that make up this BAT were reviewed with the Budget Committee to address concerns previously raised in last year's efficiency study. Additionally, the BAT contains two uh, relatively small requests that are contingent on board bat approval to make funds available for these purchases. Included is $800,000 to purchase spare student Chromebooks and $767,000 to cover the second year lease for a uh, lease payment for display panels whose contract the board approved last year. Available funds of 33.7 million are coming from activity three instructional salaries due to salary savings due to vacancies and a challenging hiring environment. Additionally, 22.8 million in activity three that was originally planned in substitute salaries now needs to be moved to the Kelly Services substitute contract, which was implemented in FY 2023. 4.4 million is coming from mid-level management due to mid-level administration due to vacancies in a challenging hiring environment. 
I request a transfer of $4 million into Activity 4, Instructional Textbooks and Supplies. will provide funds required for the purchase of social studies textbooks, furniture and supplies for expansion of pre-K, 959000 spare Chromebooks for students, 800000 as previously mentioned, and principal's reallocation of budget to school level of $1.8 million. A transfer of $23.6 million into Activity 5 will mainly cover $22.8 million for the Kelly substitute contract. Substitutes have been planned previously in salaries and fixed charges, uh, fringe benefits, but are paid for on a contract in FY 2023. The transfer will also cover year two of a six year lease for display panels, 767,000 also mentioned previously. A transfer to 2.5 million into activity six, special ed will cover increased costs for non-public placement. A transfer of 5 million into activity 11, maintenance of plant will provide funds required for maintenance service contracts caused by excess vacancies in facilities, 4.5 million, and construction of a dance studio at Deep Creek Middle School for $500,000. A transfer of 3 million into activity 12, fixed charges will cover the unplanned increase in state retirement costs. We'll now uh, be happy to take any questions you may have. And Mr. Tantle, if you may want to scroll up, I know you're showing the. Oh, the sorry. Charges. Yeah. 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 You yeah, may yeah. want to scroll up just so sure. anybody, yes. anybody's yes. watching can. Yeah. And if anyone, uh, again, you should have this in board docs, but uh, let, let me actually want to, uh, to your point, Mr. Hartlow, let me just touch for those who haven't seen it before. Let me just familiarize you with the actual uh, bat. So there's two tabs to the bat. Uh, and this is simply saying where the dollars are going to and where they're coming from. So uh, for the increases, you can see the appropriate, the present appropriation, which is the adopted budget in those activities, the amount we're transferring and what the new total will be. And then to the right, we simply have uh, where the money is coming from. So you can see, as I just mentioned, uh, 4.4 million from mid-level and 34 million just about from instructional salaries. On the bottom of the first page is <clears throat> just a very brief high-level summary of what's occurring in the BAT. Just talking about realigning uh, funds, uh, really things I've uh, touched on. And on the second page, there's just a little, it's not heavy in detail, but a little more descriptive on why the where exactly the money's going to and where it's coming from. Uh, so you can see the all the increases by category, and these are all things I just mentioned in my opening statement. And here are the decreases by category. So that's really uh, all there is to it. Um, you know, and then we have signatures. Uh, so the one in board docs has my signature, Mr. Hartleff's signature, and then at already, and then after hopefully a positive vote, the superintendent and uh, the board chair will sign the document. We will then send it off to the county along with a couple of supporting documents that they require. Then Mr. Hartleff and I uh, will we'll have two meetings with the county. One is with staff and it's sort of a pre-meeting where they go over actually three meetings. There's a pre-meeting uh, where staff goes over everything just to kind of make sure everything looks good. Uh, then you probably all know there's a work session with the council. So they have before every meeting a work session to go through their entire agenda quickly. Although it's open to the public, there's normally not too many people. Um, and then the council We'll have a final board vote on the bat, which I believe uh, will be in early June, but it's not actually up on the calendar yet. So that's a quick summary. Uh, if you want to add anything, Mr. Hartlove, or if we we can happy to take any questions. Yeah, I was going to say I see Miss Miss Hen has uh, uh, she's I think wants to ask a question. Yes, thank thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manowski. May I ask a question? Uh, yes, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and thank you, Mr. Tantliff. I just have one quick question off the bat. Um, the construction of the dance studio, 
Is off that the bat, on the bat. <laughs> <laughs> is that considered a capital improvement project? Uh, it's not in this case because it's fairly small and it was paid for uh, out of operating funds. So it will be reflected in the operating budget. Although, yes, if it is a capital project in the way we think of a capital project, but it's not funded with our capital project dollars. Okay, what what is the determinant for um, what capital projects can be funded with operating dollars if we're not seeking a state match? Because it's 500,000, which is significant. It's it's small as in terms of capital projects, but it's not. Yeah, well, I, I think we when we uh, we did go through the detail on that in last month's BLT, but basically C and I scooped up extra money they had throughout their budget to kind of uh, fulfill this critical need. I don't know that there is a hard and fast requirement anywhere, but what I will say is this would kind of of the projects like this, and we usually have one, maybe two each year, and dance studios are very typical. It seems like we've done one each of the last several years. Um, but the function uh, that it falls under, dance studios uh, under C&I, uh, they felt there was a critical need and they were able to find and reallocate money within their budget to fund it. But I, I think it'd be rare that this would be kind of the high end of what you'd see. The other dance studios off the top of my head, I haven't looked. They might have been a little less. It might have been three or four hundred thousand. It just matters. You know, the money can add up quick if you need to expand the space. And if you need to, maybe the space that's big enough is a science lab and you got to move all the equipment into a different room, et cetera. Uh, so I don't think a hard and fast rule, Ms. Hen. OK, and, and this may not be a question you can answer, Mr. Tantlove, and I don't want to take the committee's time up um, with it, but I'm curious as to how that would be factored in since we're using operating dollars if the state were to consider overall capital improvement investment in a particular school when prioritizing other investments. Do you know what I'm saying? If they're looking at total capital investment and we're spending operating dollars, even though it's a capital improvement project, this, um, because it's on the books as an operating expense, mm -hmm. would that be factored in? Do you know the answer to that? Uh, I don't know definitively, but I would assume it would not be factored in because they wouldn't have any visibility into that, but I, I don't know that process. So I'm speaking a little out of turn, but, you know, again, we're we're talking, you know, normally not more than hundreds of thousands a year. So I don't think it would really be material in that context. Well, I think it's material in the terms that we're revisiting our um, state funding formulas in terms of um, con state construction dollars and looking at equity. And if we're spending dollars improving schools in the operating budget and we're not looking at those in terms of overall capital improvement investment, and those are off the books, so to speak, and you know I'm just speaking because they're not visible, as you said, that's a concern because we need to look at the total investment in each school, whether it's going to fall under operating or capital, and improvement is an improvement. I, so I, that's I why I ask. I'm sorry. I, I, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's a it's a very good question, uh, Ms. Hen. And I think a lot of it would have to do with exactly what they're doing, um, and it's probably it would be a good qu uh, question for Mr. Dix Dixit. Um, there are definitely projects that we undertake all the time that are small in nature. We may that we do through the operating budget. We may replace a door or um, you know smaller projects that 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 you know they they improve the building but it's um it's 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 a smaller amount we wouldn't do a capital project for it and the the question for that is is, is are we somehow adding that into the uh, dollars that we're spending on that school and it's a good question and and we can try to find that probably it'd be uh, 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 something i would talk to mr dix and, and maybe our our uh, accounting folks here as far as knowing exactly what level 
of detail do we get into? Is there a is there a, a dollar threshold? But I'm thinking, you know, we capital when we buy things around the building, when we buy furniture that's over a certain cost, um, we capitalize that. Um, now it's not as part of the building, but so I'm thinking we probably do. This probably is accounted for in the um, in the, uh, the what's capitalized. Um, um, as part of the as part of the uh, on our books as part of the building. So I'm I'm thinking, but I'm going to verify that um, with our accounting folks and Mr. Dixit. Thank you. And and a doors, you know, of less concern than a five hundred thousand dollar dance studio yeah. edition. And I, yeah. I don't recall seeing it in the state database of facility improvements. So I I, I just want to see make sure it's accounted somewhere and that that's factored into consideration considering the new funding formulas. So yep. if you could get us that answer, that would be great. We'll we'll do that, and it is a very good question. Like, and I and I think you know we we when we classify things, there are things that are clearly capital, there are things that are clearly operating, and then there are the things that are kind of in the gray. And this is, I think, as Mr. Tantliff was saying, this is probably on the high end of the gray, and we're doing it in operating because, you know, the capital process is a longer process. We have an opportunity here. Uh, to take care of something and we have the resources and it fits into the dollar amount and that's why we're seizing the opportunity. But we don't want to, we want to uh, get uh, credit for doing those improvements to the building. Right, that that too. Great, yep. thank you. Thank you. And the only question I have is, can we ha have this document, do we have access to this document that you're presenting to us that I can look at it? The one that's in um, board docs doesn't even have the tab to it. It just has the one sheet. Oh, really? OK, the I, I maybe, mean, I, I think uh, as far yeah, as. Yeah, maybe maybe the conversion. Uh, yeah, is only just, one tab instead of two. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can uh, send it around right up. Do you want it right now or right after the meeting? After the I mean, just at some point I would. Yeah, to, yeah. To, it doesn't it's not immediate, but I would like to have it. Yes, please. It'll be in board docs. Um, whenever it could be out now, it should be in board docs for um, the board meeting next week whenever everything gets posted. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tentoff. But let me I'm going to check on that one, too, and make sure because sometimes when you convert to PDF. You got to tell it to do both tabs and maybe uh, we neglected to do that. Yeah. Thank it's definitely you. just it's just, it's definitely just the one for um tonight's meeting. Okay. Yeah. And Thanks. I haven't we'll seen the on. new meeting yet, but that's it. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. Um thank you for all this information. Um and now we are Mr. Hartlove, please review the follow up on the concentration of poverty funding. Sure. Um good evening. Evening. I'm going to share my screen here. I have a um, I have a very very brief presentation in our discussion of blueprint funding um, at our last meeting. The question came up about uh, we kind of dove into concentration of poverty, and there were some things that the uh, the committee asked us to follow up on. So we've done that. So I have a little uh, uh, just a brief presentation of how we're accounting for concentration of poverty dollars. So um, with that, hopefully, can you see? Can you all see the uh, presentation? We can. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Good. OK, so the uh, we talked about how we uh, how we are, whether we're including it in general fund or special uh, uh, revenue funds. And uh, we have in in the budget going that's gone forward to the county executive, we have included COP in the general fund and our logic behind that. We started to discuss this a little bit, but we wanted to get you some of the actual numbers. Um, the, the the grant funded positions are charged the full cost of state retirement, which is 14.65%. Positions in the general fund are only charged the normal cost for state retirement, which is currently 5.12%. Uh, so what that what that does for COP um, and what that does for us is it frees up a uh, million dollars um, for other COP expenditures. So that's one of the reasons why we used, uh, we, we classified it in general funds. Um, the other reasons are um, the COP uh, funds 
that we were receiving in the past allowed for carryover. And the best way to account for carryover is in special revenues, or actually it's the only way to account for it. So um, beginning in 2023, however, the uh, carry forward of COP funds was no longer an option. So, um, and in addition, COP expenditures were reimbursable, reimbursable in the past, like other traditional grants. The funds now come um, in automatically with the rest of our state revenue and bi monthly payments. So these were all the reasons why we were we had it in special revenue and um, and and it made sense at that point in time. But because of the uh, the retirement aspect of this, um, um, that in in particular, it doesn't make sense to do it now that those other things have changed. Um, the other the other things just to note is is that all our blueprint uh, revenue streams are now included in the gen in the general fund, and this allows for easier tracking and oversight of the blueprint blueprint funds over time. Um, and lastly, we we do know that there were the concerns about the detail that you see. So you you do see some nice detail um, on our grants. So uh, to address those concerns, we are going to add a detailed page to the adopted. Uh, budget book outlining the eligible schools and uses of COP funds, just like we we we've done in the past for uh, for that uh, COP for the COP funds when they were uh, in special revenue. So that's kind of the follow up um, that from that, um, and now we'll open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? I do. <laughs> yes, Miss Hen. I guess it narrows it down, doesn't it? Um, with two of us. Thanks, <laughs> Mr. Hurtlove. So can we go back, um, and thank you for the presentation, to your first slide about sure. the difference in the cost of retirement? Sure. Would you mind explaining who determines um, that cost differential and the why behind the, yes, why it's the a good, special it's... revenue positions or, or the cost is higher? It kind of it goes back to um, it goes back a few years ago uh, where the the state basically um, we picked up more of the pension funds, uh, more of the retirement funds from the state. It was when they were having some some budgetary problems, and they basically said they would uh, sh we they shifted once upon a time they covered all teacher pensions. And then when they were we were having some budgetary shortfalls, they said that they would uh, they would cover pensions other than what they called the normal cost, and it's it's very much into um, um, actuary terminology. But there's a thing called normal cost. They shifted that to us, so we pay the normal cost for um, uh, for retirement for uh, general fund positions. For grant funded positions, um, they allow us to charge the entire amount to the grant because um, uh, we're not for, for um, we're not necessarily getting the subsidy for uh, for that for grant funded positions. So that's that's the difference. We're, we, for for general fund positions, we are only picking up the normal cost for grant funded positions were picking up the entire um, the entire cost, normal cost and whatever the other costs. I'm not sure of all the actuarial definitions on those, but um, we're picking up the full cost there. So that's the that's the reason for that. And those rates are published each year by MSD. They don't change much, but they can change. Okay, I'm still processing that, and Ms. Domanowski might have a follow-up question while sure. I wrap my head around that. And and it might be helpful to see the numbers themselves because it seems like if these grants are funded by the state and their share is being, we're receiving the appropriation for their share. It's six of one, half dozen of the other. But it sounds like our share is greater if. Right. If it's, if, it's, if, it's if it's classified as a, a grant funded position rather than a norm, quote unquote, normal. Right. Right. General fund position. And, and, it, and it also because of the other items. So you, and this is this is a, obviously a big part of this, but the other items are just the facts that uh, the are the facts that 
things have changed with COP. The the it allowed for carryover. Um, it, it was a reimbur it was reimbursable in the in the past. Now it's not acting like a grant anymore. It's it's there is no carryover. So whatever you know, if we haven't spent it all at the end of, of the end of the year, we don't. Um, in effect, it 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 goes into our 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 overall general fund balance. Um, but we also, uh, it's not reimbursable. We get the dollars uh, uh, with the rest of our state revenue and by monthly payments. So it's kind of the way they are, the requirements when the dollars have changed. So that's why we've, uh, we're looking at them now, now more as, as um, unrestricted general funds, well, they're, they're uh, general funds, so. And, and, uh, I know your concern um, that you had voiced earlier was uh, about the information that you received. So we did want to address that, and that's why we we um, we are adding that page. So you'll see that in our final version. If we had it you, in, in future years, you'll see it in the superintendent's proposed and the board's approved um, or the board's uh, recommended or uh, request. But uh, this is the first time we're doing it, so you'll see it in the um, in the um, board's adopted budget when that comes out. And I appreciate that. It just seems like we're moving very quickly with a lot of changes, and there don't seem to be. And I'm and I'm not speaking for us, but on a state level, there don't seem to be the same controls that we had previously because. We're figuring this out as we go along and I and by we I mean the state in general and and that that will follow. And and we're feeling those those growing pains, right? Or you know, the pains of those changes. So I appreciate you addressing the concerns that I had through the reporting. I think the state will probably be, you know, finalizing some of these things and and fine tuning it as as they grapple with the same things. Yep. So I'm probably a few steps ahead of where they are with some of this stuff, but so I appreciate you and, working with us here. Yes, and and uh, and I also I understand your there's state is certainly going to have more oversight, so there's going to be a lot of reporting requirements for these these uh, fund these funds. So although they're not truly restricted in nature at this point, there will be a lot of reporting um, in compliance types of things to to uh, requirements to you know verify that we are using the funding um, as as uh, for the purposes that it's given to us. So that we're not be, we're not going to be able to just use this, these funds for whatever we want. They are going to have to be used as the state has has uh, indicated. And and that's helpful. And and I hope that that. Um, Reporting is also made publicly accessible because that's that's something we get asked by our constituents, right? And and stakeholders all the time. They they want that assurance just as the board does. We we want visibility into that. So I'm comforted to hear you say that that the state is requiring that. And when we start to see that, I think we'll feel better about this whole process that that that, that will be in those checks and balances will be in place. Good, good, good. Thank good. you. Um, I just wanted a little clarification. Um, so the grant funded positions that get um, the, you know, the set the fifth go back. Yeah, thank you. So the full cost of retirement 14. So is it just the like, is it just the actual positions like an FTE position that you have to pay for for the like if you use grant money? That's what gets that fourteen point six five percent. Correct. If it's it's for positions where the individual is is eligible for retirement, it wouldn't be for an hourly position or something like that. But if we have a teacher or some you know a, an employee who's a, a regular employee, but they're being supported by these funds, they're still eligible for uh, the state retirement, and that's why um, that's why there's this uh, charge in there. So what if we're using the funds for something that it's not a position, the grant funds for something that's not a position? Then it's not charged. This is only charged. The, this is only charged for um, someone's actual salary. So it would, if someone's making a hundred thousand dollars a year, we would pay 
uh, we'd have a charge in there for fourteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars for pension. For well, what person. I mean by what I mean by that is, um, so if you're transferring the grant money to the general fund or the you know to use, are you transferring all the money that from that grant that could be used for positions and, and anything else, or just the money that's going to be used for positions? We're we're putting it all. All the money is going to be in the general fund because it makes sense to have it all in one place. That's where I might have a little bit of an issue as far as like I understand why you're doing it for the positions, but then now you're putting all the money in when all that grant money isn't going to positions, but you will put like just as far as like the details is what it's being used for. That's going to be added in like when you spend the money from the general fund that was moved over from the grant fund, you will mark what it actually was used for correct, correct. Does that makes sense there's, yes there's no just because it's in the general funds does not mean it it will be it'll be accounted for with a project number there'll be you know all the expenses will be we'll be able to track those expenses to those to to this grant okay so, so there will be like this amount of money like say it was five million for one grant um, two million went to salaries. Three million went to such such such. But it's all going to be earmarked with this is the grant money that we took over to, and this is how we spent it. We will be able. That's where the state is going with their reporting. Is that you're able to align um, revenues with expenses? Uh, that's where it's going, or that's what's that's going where to we happen? are. Yeah, that's where we. That's where we are. Yes, that's what they're going to. That's what they're requiring. From a reporting uh, perspective. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody Hello. have any questions? Hello, Rod. <laughs> Rod, I'm trying to mute you, but it's not yes. working. You keep. <laughs> what? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Then why are you trying to mute me? Well, there's something in the background. You have the, something oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That's okay. <laughs> Do you have any questions? No, but that's several rooms away. I'll shut a door. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, if that's all for we have any more questions for um oh, where am I? Uh Mr. Hartlove or Mr. Tanloff about this? No? Okay. So then the next item, um, I, I wanted to review committee goals and agenda setting for um, the budget committee for this year. Um, this is, you know, it's not going to be formal. We're not going to sit down and write our actual goals right now. I just want to kind of get some ideas from everyone. Um, especially one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, facilitating the fiscal year budget and getting that to board members sooner so that um, we can ask our questions, get our questions to, um, you know, staff members and have them answered quickly. It's usually, and not just that, also what we want in that budget. Um, I know it's it was 400 pages this, uh, this past year, but um, some of the information that I was looking for wasn't in there and some information that was in there, you know, it was, you know, I, I needed more clarification. So if we could come up with something, you know, formative, directional wise, you know, for the next superintendent as far as what we're looking for in a comp comprehensive budget plan and then a timeline of when to have these things in so that, you know, the budget committee and staff members aren't, you know, working late nights up until we you know, have to approve this budget. Um, does anybody else have any suggestions? No, but I think that's an excellent idea because I, I feel that we're always, you know, as board members, we're real late in this process. And and then when we when we finally join the process, I mean, it's overwhelming. If we're involved earlier on, I just think it's going to be, it, it, you know, we're going to have a better understanding of what's happening. Thank you. I agree um, completely. And when some board members attended a budget training that was done by MABE recently, they spoke to the need for almost year round 
involvement side by side with staff um, in the budget development process itself. And I think Mabe um, could be available with us to help um, rework our budget process to include board member involvement, not so much in the weeds, but really to make suggestions about how the board can play um, a, within our lane, of course, a, a governance role, but year round. And I included this in my list of um, goals that I'd like to see the committee work toward. Um, and Mr. Manowski, I listed those in the chat. If you'd like me to um, review them, I can. But one is to establish a new budget process and timeline, including year round board input and board participate, including board participation in the collective bargaining process um, without going into detail in that because salaries make up such a large percentage of our budget. Um, that was a recommendation by Mabe. It's um, commonplace for board members to have a seat at the table in that. And that's just a large percentage of our budget. Um, and would you like me to review the other suggestions? Yes, that'd be great. Um, and it, what, could you also put these in an email to me too? Sure. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yep. Um, the first thing I listed was, and these are in order, I believe in priority, although one and two are um, high priorities. One is to facilitate completion of zero-based budgeting for the next budget cycle. Um, that is something that Mabe also suggested doing on a periodic basis. Um, I think they mentioned every few years. Um, two, I just mentioned establishing the new budget process and timeline. That would be the, the annual process and timeline outside of that zero-based um, process, which would be done periodically. Three, facilitate the implementation of tiered departmental budget requests as part of the new process. So as another change, um, and some departments may be doing this now, but the county executive um, has mentioned that he does this with all of his departments. Um, they submit tiered requests and he would like to see BCPS do the same. And that would be extremely helpful for the board to receive the requests in, in tiers. Um, and if we do have additional funds, what could we fund and, and what are the priorities? And then four, um, this would be a, a nice to have, so I'm going to tier my goals. Um, but four would be to, to facilitate benchmarking against peer LEAs. So either using the um, LEAs that the Public Works Efficiency Report used um, as a starting point, perhaps, um, but look at their budgets once we've um, either gone through this exercise or ahead of time and benchmark our own against those. So those were some ideas I had. And I'll send them um, to the committee and staff by email. That's great, thank you. Um, did Mr. Tanloff or Mr. Hartlove do? Oh, sorry, Mr. McMillian, go ahead. That's okay. I, I was just going to say, people talk about, you know, this is our budget. It, it's the board's budget. It's the board's budget. But I really don't feel that way because I don't feel invested in it. You, you know, we sign off on it and and we get to add, you, you know, at some point in time or subtract or whatever. But it, the, the, our engagement in it is so limited, I don't feel invested in the process. So I, I think Ms. Hans got some real good ideas. Thank you. And and if I can, Ms. Dominowski. I, yes. Weigh in. Yeah, I think these are all, you know, things that are, you know, I think the things that Ms. Hen um, outlined are, are, you know, uh, um, are good goals to have and good thing, things that we can uh, try to address. Um, and we can, you know, certainly we we hear you. We want to have, you know, a transparent process. We uh, we want board uh, involvement, and we understand the, you know, the concerns. And we understand, you know, this was a relatively new board, um, so you know, it was kind of, you know, it was it was an interesting process having folks start, you know, um, you know, right, kind of, you know, in the heat of the budget process. Um, the only the only concern I just throw it out there is it's kind of the old you know we, we want to have good information and the earlier you start the more you're working with 
and, and it doesn't mean we can't do it. And it doesn't mean there's not a value, but you're working with more. The, the data is more preliminary. You know, we're 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 dealing with more estimates on revenues. We're dealing with more estimates on on what our various costs are. Um, and that information gets better as we go along. I, for instance, this year um, with the state revenue, you know, we rode that roller coaster and the budget until you get good information is not real meaningful. You know, if when we thought we were going to get, you know, was it 27 or I don't know what the number, but it was a very large amount of additional revenue for those few days when we thought that, you know, we had we started to think about ways to utilize that, you know, great ways to utilize that. And then it turned out we didn't get that revenue. So, um, you know, it, that's the that's the thing that some of this will by necessity will be in the February March time frame because that's when we start to really get good data. The governor, the governor's budget is not released until you know the third week of January. Um, we really don't. Uh, I think it's spending affordability, uh, which kind of informs at least what the you know what the county can ultimately afford. Um, doesn't come out until I, I don't know if it's January fifteenth or you know. So I just put that out there is is things to keep in mind that does not negate any of the things that Ms. Hen has up here or uh, does not mean that we can't, uh, you know, begin our process earlier and 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 and, and address your concerns. Ms. Hen, you had a comment? I do, and thank you, Mr. Hartlove. I, I certainly appreciate that and um, disclaimer, you know, of, of working with uncertainty. Um, that said, I think working with the knowns is just as powerful or can be um, just as helpful because we we do know, let's say if we start with MOE, um, we know what we can effectively rely on. And I think that makes the starting point um, of going through the zero-based budgeting exercise a perfect um, starting point. It's It's a lot of work, but for a new board going through this process, it's a terrific um, professional development exercise. I think for the board and staff who've never been through that process, it allows a reset um, to say, OK, what is our vision? What what do we hope to accomplish? And is the budget aligned with that vision and, and our goals? Because that that hasn't been done. I've I've been on the board since 2016. I don't know if it was done in the years um, before that. I. I can't um, speak to that, but it hasn't been done since. Um, we've had three super superintendents since then, and we've been through multiple boards since then. So it's it's time to do that reset and to really look at, as Mr. McMillian said, we we haven't been involved in the process and it really does not, I agree with him, it's not our budget and it needs to be. So I think going through that exercise with what we know now and, you know, with, with 80% roughly being salaries, we know what we need. We know the positions we have, you know, we have to have to keep the lights on. But having a seat at the table for collective bargaining, knowing that we're prioritizing people, pay, you know, positions, that's a good starting point. We we know a lot out of the gate, if you will. Um, and I think we're in a position now with this committee and with the involvement and engagement that we have had with the board members that are in place um, to really hit the ground running. So I appreciate the information and mm -hmm. and like I said, disclaimer that things things can change, but I I think we have enough to get started and at least make a go of it. Um, and I, yeah. I do think Mabe could be very helpful um, working with us in that regard, assuming we have a professional development budget to <laughs> <laughs> utilize their services. And and just to follow up, I don't want to I don't want to cut anybody off, but um, that zero base that you talked about, what my comments wouldn't impact that at all because the zero base really is, you know, it's a good practice um, and it's something you know you you it doesn't you don't necessarily need to know what you're going to get in revenues. It's really a good preparation for. A worst case scenario because you could do zero based and that would let you know what you absolutely had to have to keep the place open and then everything else could be built up 
built over top of that. So I think the zero based is really a good, um, strong um, recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That, that, that was the only thing I was going to add to about making it more our budget because I, I, I can't tell you how many emails I got saying the board's budget doesn't include this and I was like, it's I was like, I, is it my budget? I didn't really have anything to do with it other than I got to read it after it was done. And so I, I feel like if we were um, included more in the process before it gets to us um, and we were more transparent with our, you know, our constituents and our everyone, what was going on and what we're considering when it comes out, it doesn't come out as a big shock to anyone or or if it is a shock, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just um, that it's just it's not like this overwhelming mountain that we have to climb one day when it come lands on our desk. So um, I, I like all these suggestions and, um, and this will uh, this is this is a good start um, and uh, the conversations are good. So thank you very much. I, I have another comment. Yes, Mr. Williams. OK, yeah. I, and, and I know change is is difficult for a lot of people and and we're used to doing something one way, but but I think we're be we're behind the times and and we need to accept that, you know, the, the, the change in the process. And and I, I just see this is going to be it's, it's going to be a more valuable document and valuable, maybe not the right word, but it's it's just going to be and, and I know it's going to be difficult. and There's going to be people that are resistant to that, but but I think that that's it, it needs to evolve and it and it probably hasn't evolved in a long time. Uh, and and it, it you know, it, it needs to change. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Mr. Hartloff. Thank you, Mr. Tantliff. Does anyone have um, any final comments or questions? Or are we going to end this at the earliest time ever for a budget <laughs> committee meeting? <laughs> like, anyone? I, I'll just end it with one final comment. I, I really appreciate the spirit of these meetings. It's They're so healthy and collaborative. And Mr. Hartloff, Mr. Tantliff, I it can be easy all the time putting you know, feeling our questions <laughs> and um you just do a great job and and i appreciate your hard work and preparation and everything you bring to these conversations and just the spirit of teamwork you bring and i wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for that um i can't tell you how much i truly do appreciate that and that th these dialogues never happened before and it's not only refreshing, but it's moving us in the right direction. And I truly appreciate you both. Thank you. And I Thank and you. I will just uh, uh, acknowledge Mr. Tantleff, uh, because when the questions come in, I usually say, Wit, can you get the answer to this question? So I don't deserve that much of the uh, the credit. Wit gets most of the credit. And and I'm very sorry for my delay. My mind was somewhere else. This is my only defense. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, no problem, Mr. McMillian. Um, thank you, everyone, for tonight. Um, and our next, let me see where I am. Sorry. Uh, that is all. Um, the last item in the agenda is announcements. The next budget committee meeting is scheduled on a very important day, Wednesday, May 10th, 2023, at 5 30, um, unless there's any further business. Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. I thank you all for joining us tonight.